This show is sponsored by Alicia's Pillows and Things. Check out the Facebook page, Alicia's Pillows and Things, where you will find home decor you will not be able to resist at prices anybody can afford. Check out the pillows and stools of your favorite sports teams. Maybe you want a set of your kid's favorite cartoon or movie character. You can also get full body and neck pillows as well. Log on to NGSCSports.com and go to the Alicia's Pillows and Things tab on the homepage to complete your order. It makes a great gift for Christmas at an affordable price. NGSC Sports. We never stop. You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports' YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. I forgot. I am soloed out those other tracks. Oops. Welcome, everyone. Mm. Ah, to the good place. That is known as the A Foreign Affair Podcast. I am Edward Green. Uh, not joined, unfortunately, this week by McCall in Crime, Wes Bradshaw. Wes Bradshaw, though, will be joining us later from Parts Unknown uh, to bring us a, a, a splendid Anfield Corner and possibly, possibly so raw. Um, but, uh, otherwise we are going to continue on here with the A Foreign Affair Podcast episode 234 presented by NGSC Sports and NGSCSports.com. We never stop as well as Alicia's pillows and things. Do you like pillows? Do you like things? Do you wish you had more pillows and or things? Well then head on over to Facebook and do a quick search for Alicia's Pillows and Things, and you can find all the latest deals there for your sports covered fabric things. Yeah, that's Alicia's Pillows and Things. So now, guys, we are going to uh, start the podcast off. Um, and normally we would jump right, obviously, into the, the week that was in the Premier League and, and the rest of our action. Um Unfortunately, before we have to get to the the match news, um, there's there's truly only one place to actually start, uh, and that is with the the absolutely horrific news coming out of uh, Leicester this past weekend, uh, where the owner of Leicester City, uh, Vichai Srivaraharan Prabha, I honestly hope I pronounced that right, um, was killed in a helicopter crash. Uh, just outside the King Power Stadium on Saturday. Um, Kun Vichai, as uh, he was known, um, brought Leicester City out of out of the depths of league football and brought them all the way to a Premier League title. Um, you know, just you know, uh, a terrible, terrible, terrible tragedy. Um, scenes outside of the KP all the week have been... Um, you know, so many tributes, so much uh, laid at the, the memorial place there. Uh, all the players coming out with very heartfelt messages. Um, just just terrible. It happened on a Saturday as, uh, as he was wont to do, uh, leave the stadium uh, after the match in a helicopter uh, to take him back to London. Um, and unfortunately, this time uh, it it crashed just outside of the stadium, killing the uh, the six people on board, and he was he was one of them. So, uh, just absolutely tragic news, and and our hearts. I know I I I, I can feel fr- pretty freely to speak for West Branch right here, and he may even say something later on in Anfield Corner um, about it, but. I, I also, from everyone here at the A Foreign Affair podcast, um, extend our heartfelt condolences to the the Leicester City family. Um, 
and just how terrible this is. So, uh, again, uh, the owner of Luster City dead at 60. So, um, with that, there there is so little way to transition into actual football now. Um, but we do have to do it as we move on here. Um, let's hit the Premier League. As you know, when, when Wes is not here, we tend to go pretty quickly through the matches as they played out uh, during the weekend. And we also have uh, League Cup matches to get through from the last couple days. So let's get right to it. Uh, as you will undoubtedly hear later in Anfield Corner, Liverpool dispatched Cardiff very easily 4-1 at Anfield, uh, Mo Salah on the board yet again for Liverpool, uh, along with Zerdan Shakiri and a Sadio Mane brace. Um, Cardiff did get kind of close in the 77th minute as they made it 2-1 thanks to Callum Pedersen goal. Um, but then Shakiri and Mane struck um, just three minutes apart after the 84th minute to, to put the game away for good and give uh, Liverpool uh, their top spot uh, right under City, of course, thanks to goal differential, as we'll get to later in the table, but still Liverpool undefeated in the Premier League this year. Um, otherwise, uh, Southampton drew Newcastle 0-0. I want to say this is about the 18th 0-0 draw Southampton have had this year. In fact, as we look at their results, we have 1-2-3, so I was a little off. Um, but this is back-to-back 0-0 draws, 3 on the season. This is also the fifth straight Premier League match where uh, Southampton have failed to score a goal. So that's that's definitely not good. Uh, in fact, as I'm looking here real quickly at the table, uh, Southampton are joint second worst in terms of uh, goals scored this Premier League season so far. So something that we have to work on. And of course, Newcastle, well, Newcastle's just bad. Um... At, uh, at Vicarage Road, it was a easy day for Watford as they dispatched Huddersfield, another not very good team in the Premier League, 3-0. Uh, Roberto Pereira with a goal in the 10th minute got them off to a flying start. Gerard de la Feu with a goal nine minutes later. And then Isaac Gret success finishing it off in the 8th minute gives the Hornets another victory and keeps them edging up towards the top half of the top half of the table. Uh, Fulham falls to Bournemouth 3-0 at Craven Cottage. Uh, Callum Wilson scores twice on the day to lead the Cherries to another victory and uh, keep their top six hopes alive. Um, Brighton edges Wolves 1-0 thanks to a Glenn Murray 48th minute strike. Um, Leicester uh, with the 1-1 draw against West Ham, of course, before the tragic events that then unfolded. Um, it was Wilfred Ndidi, whose last-minute uh, goal against West Ham secured a point for the Foxes. Uh, on Sunday, uh, Crystal Palace drew Arsenal 2-2, thanks to a pair of penalties uh, for Luka Milovicevic. Milovicevic? Milovicevic? Yes. Um I remember, Penteke can't take those penalties anymore. Uh, but he had a pair of pens uh, in the second half uh, that were sandwiched around goals from Granit Xhaka and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang for Arsenal. Uh, but that does uh, end Arsenal's winning ways, uh, even though they do still leave with a point. Uh, Chelsea ran roughshod over Burnley 4-0 at Turf Moor. Um, four different scorers on the sheet for the Blues. And Manchester United weathered a late storm from Everton to get a 2-1 win. Uh, Pogba and Martial scoring for United in that one. And then finally on Monday, uh, City used a very early Riyad Mahrez goal against Tottenham to score a 1-0 victory at Wembley. Um, Tottenham had a chance late uh, with Eric Lamella, but he could not quite get uh, over the the pitch. <laughs> Some people couldn't, apparently. Not even UEFA. Um, as uh, City extends their also undefeated streak in the Premier League as they stay uh, perfect so far. So uh, that was the week that was. Now the week that will be as we head into match week 11. Um this Saturday, get your week started off right with a great clash at the Vitality. Uh, Bournemouth hosting Manchester United. That is a big one 
for both these clubs. Uh, a Bournemouth with victory here would cement them as definite top six European spot contenders for the season. Uh, a United win gets them back um, into the into the thick of things, as it were. Eleven a.m. You have Everton versus Brighton and Hove. You also have Newcastle versus Watford, West Ham versus Burnley, Cardiff versus Leicester, and at one thirty. Um, definitely your match of the week, Arsenal versus Liverpool at the Emirates. Uh, we will see how Arsenal do. We, we know they've played City. We know they've played uh, Chelsea. That was the hard start to their season. Now they get Liverpool. Uh, and then at 3.45, yes, afternoon football on NBC Sports, it will be Wolves hosting Tottenham. And then on Sunday, you have at 10 a.m., Manchester City versus Southampton. And at 11, you have Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. Don't forget uh, we gain an hour this weekend. Yay! And then on Monday Night Football on NBC Sports, 3 o'clock, Huddersfield versus Fulham. Cool. And then we'll be back to uh, Champions League action that week. So that is that is your schedule coming up here. Uh, let's take a look at the table. Uh, Manchester City and Liverpool both on 26 points. Uh, City still 8 up on Liverpool via goal differential. Uh, Chelsea 2 points back with 24. Arsenal 2 behind them with 22. Tottenham in 5th with 21 points. Uh, Bournemouth are in 6th with 20. Watford are in 7th with 19. And United needing to make up that ground again against Bournemouth this weekend. They are in 8th place with 17 points. Currently Five out of a Champions League spot. Um, as we look at the bottom of your heart, the relegation zone, Cardiff uh, is narrowly outside thanks to goal differential. They are in 17th place. Fulham are in 18th with five points. Newcastle and Huddersfield are at the bottom with three points apiece. So that is your Premier League wrap for the week. Let's quickly go to the League Cup action that took place uh, this week. Um, start off... Uh, the Cherries keep on winning. They beat Championship Norwich 2-1. Uh, a Stephen Cook goal just two, manage, two minutes after a Norwich equalizer in the 70th minute. Got Bournemouth the win at the Vitality as they will be marching on to the final eight. Uh, uh, elsewhere, uh, League One side Burton Albion got a home victory against Nottingham Forest 3-2. Um... Big goals there, and uh, they are still the lowest remaining side remaining, uh, so still in the tournament. As uh, Arsenal dispatched fellow League One side Blackpool 2-1. Uh, Blackpool with a late comeback, thanks to Padraic O'Connor. Oh, Paddy O'Connor. Um, coming up with a goal in the 66th minute. Blackpool tried for the equalizer, but could not pick it up against Arsenal. So Arsenal do advance. Uh, Chelsea beat uh, former... Uh, player now turned Derby County manager Frank Lampard 3-2. Um, unfortunately for Derby County, a pair of own goals really sealed their fate early. Um, they they fought gamely. Um, a Cesc Fabregas 41st minute goal, the ultimate difference in the match. But Derby County acquitting themselves very well at Stamford Bridge. Um, Tottenham. Beat West Ham 3-1, a brace from Hyunmin Sun as he's back to his scoring ways for his Spurs. And uh, Fernando Lorente put the game out of reach after West Ham had pulled the goal back in the 71st through Lucas Perez. Uh, Lorente, with the goal in the 78th minute, clinched it for Tottenham as they take one of their London rivals out of the tournament. As we'll see, they will be playing another London rival in the next round. And uh, Middlesbrough beat Crystal Palace uh, 1-0. That's championship now, Middlesbrough. Uh, thanks to the deciding goal from Lewis Wing, young Wing, with a first-half stoppage time goal. So Palace are out. Um, Man City and Fulham will be playing tomorrow, November 1st. Uh, it's the day when you guys probably listen to this. And then uh, due to the tragedy, of course, with Leicester, Leicester versus Southampton has been postponed. Um, as far as I know, there has been no... Um, make up date set yet, so we don't we don't know when that will play. Um, we do know the quarterfinals will be played on December 18th and 19th, so still a decent amount of time to try and make that up. Um, and we do have the quarterfinals 
set up already. Uh, as mentioned, Arsenal will be taking on Tottenham at uh, at the Emirates on December 19th. Um, the other matches include the winner of Leicester Southampton taking on the winner of Man City Fulham. Uh, Middlesbrough and Albert and Albion, the two non-Premier League sides left, will be facing off each other in Middlesbrough. And Chelsea takes on Bournemouth. That just looks like it could be a great clash uh, over, at, over at Stamford Bridge. And what this also does mean is that we are guaranteed a non-Premier League side in the semifinals because one of Millsboro and Burton Albion have to go through. So, uh, hey, there you go. Still, uh, still a lot of great teams left in this tournament, and we will see how the quarterfinals end up shaking out. All right, uh, so that is to news and notes now. And uh, uh, some more bad news in a week that has been really bad, and we're not even getting into the uh, the dismembered uh, player out of Sao Paulo uh, from this from earlier this week. Um, Glenn Hoddle, uh, former uh, England manager, uh, actually uh, was at the BT Sports studio this past weekend and collapsed and had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, he has been getting treatment, and it looks like he is going to recover well. Uh, it looks like it may have been, a, uh, I believe, a heart attack um, that, uh, that came over him as he was in the studio. Um, but again, he is... Uh, after after a lot of treatment, does seem to be making a a, a good recovery there. Um, of course, Glenn Hoddle also won a pair of FA Cups and the UEFA Cup with Tottenham, uh, and uh, won a a French league title under Arsene Wenger uh, at Monaco. Um, so uh, Glenn Hoddle, a a fixture of English football, um, is it was in a very scary situation, but looks like he will be coming out okay. A um, little more uh, global football news here as we as we go through news and notes. Um, ah, this this is a story that's just going to keep on giving. Um, last week we found out that uh, you know we talked about this uh, whole La Liga Barcelona playing their match in the United States, and hey, we're going Charlie Stilatano, we're gonna do it. Yeah, we're we're gonna do it. And uh, Gianni Infinito, who is, of course, the president of FIFA, who has to approve of these things, said, no, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Real Madrid club president Florentino Perez, who don't want to take his side on things, but might have to here, has come out against it. Uh, multiple other people have come out against it. Um, and when asked about La Liga's proposal to do this with relevant sports, uh, Infantino said, according to uh, AS, uh, quote, I'm strongly opposed to this and I deny any permit to play the Girona-Barca game in Miami. Official games of a league must be played inside the country. Um, uh, Spain's FA uh, representative, Luis Rubiales, has also been trying to get Infantino to uh, go ahead and shut this down. Um, FIFA does have to give their approval, as does uh, UEFA, uh, because the, they're Spanish teams. CONCACAF, because we play in North America, as well as, uh, as FIFA. And if FIFA says no, then it's not happening. So, you know, uh, Javier Tebas... Um, had already, you know, signed this contract, a 15-year deal with relevant media, but uh, didn't uh, go through the proper channels to do. So we'll see. Um, I this this feels less and less likely, like it's going to happen, and it's just it's it's going to be terrible. We're we're I think roughly two and a half months out from this match supposedly taking place, and there's still a question of of whether it's even going to happen. It's great. Great job, La Liga. Great job. Uh, Infantino, though, um, said something much more head-scratching this week. Um, he, uh, he said that, uh, you know, uh, according to the BBC Sport, hey, uh, you know that uh, thing we said where we were going to make the, uh, the World Cup 48 teams starting in 2026 when we held the, uh, the tournament in, uh, in North America? Yeah, uh, we might try that with Qatar in 2022. Yeah, 
saying, uh, quote, if it is possible, why not? We have to see if it is possible, if it is feasible. We were discussing with our Quatari friends, which that statement just made me throw up in my mouth. Uh, we were discussing with our many other friends in the region, and we hope that this can happen. And if not, we will have tried. We'll have tried because we always have to try to do things in a better way. First of all, it's not better. This is not better that you're going to 48 teams. It's definitely, decidedly not better to do this at all. But surely, like, you know, okay, we'll do it in North America. You know, we've already got tons of stadiums. We're, we're fine. But with the terrible process that has gone into doing this in Qatar, with already having to, to you know, push it back into the winter and with everything else going on, to try and do 48 teams in this World Cup just seems idiotic. Like, like there's literally... No other way to describe this. So I don't. It's it's just it's just stupid. It's just stupid. So I don't know. I I don't know. I I hope this does. I I know it's gonna happen. I I I. I don't see how this could possibly happen for Qatar again, as as many problems as they've had. So, we'll see. We will see. So that's going to do it for the news and notes. Um, so we're going to hit that watch four uh, with what we're watching in the week that was in the week that will be. And I'll tell you what, right now, boy, I tell you, um, I will be uh, keeping a close eye on that League of Legends, uh, of course, Cloud Nine. The, uh, the last North American representative at the, the Global League of Legends Championship, currently being held in South Korea, uh, made a valiant run towards the finals, stopped in the semifinals, unfortunately, um, farther than any North American team has ever made it. So, hashtag C9 fighting. Um, very proud of my boys over there in, in South Korea. Um, but what that does leave us with is a final between uh, the European number one seed, Fnatic, Versus the number two Chinese team in Invictus Gaming. Um, the so the finals will be held in South Korea. Uh, I believe opening ceremonies will be a three a.m. Eastern time start, uh, with the match set to kick off at four a.m. Um, I will not be watching that live. Uh, thankfully, now now that C Nine has been knocked out, I can just sleep. <laughs> and I do not have to wake up at 3.30 in the morning after going to sleep at 1 um, and to watch them play. So, so no, I am definitely watching that on tape delay. But uh, I'm, I'm very excited. They've, they, they've been very much hyping up this opening ceremony. I'm very excited to see how it works. Um, very excited to see how two very good teams are going to play in the final. And I'm excited to hear my boy uh, Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns with his first call of a world final. And, and I just, none of you probably know who that is. And that's fine. Go follow Mad Captain Flowers on Twitter. Um, nobody is more deserving of this moment than this man. He has put in so much work. So, so many hours. And he has made it. He's made it. He is, he is the American dream. He pulled himself up by his Ethernet bootstraps. I don't know. Anyway, um, but super proud of Captain Flowers. Very, very proud for him. Um, so anyway, uh, check that out again. Uh, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yay. Um, or I believe probably around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time if you want to watch the replay. You can watch that on uh, na. or watch.legallegend.com or on Twitch or on YouTube. So check it out. That's what my watch for is for this week. So now, now without further ado, uh, let's throw it over to Wes Bradshaw from Parts Unknown for a little Anfield Corner. Wes, take it away. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's edition of Anfield Corner. I'm Wes Bradshaw, bringing you the best of action from the red side of Mersey. And folks, another week, and where do Liverpool find themselves top of the table Goal difference may say a little different. But hey, you sit up there, eight wins, two draws, no losses on the Premier League season for the Mighty Reds of Liverpool. Uh, Jurgen Klopp's boys. And it's a it's another successful week for Liverpool. We touched on it last week. 
uh, Liverpool beating Red Star Belgrade 4 0. And this past week, Cardiff City made the trip down to Anfield. And hey, let's give it up for Cardiff. They score the first league goal against Liverpool since February. February. Nearly a calendar year. I mean, it's full term carrying a child at this point, nearly. Um, you know, some, somebody got pregnant on that day and may have delivered their child before Liverpool gave up the goal to Cardiff. I'm just saying. Um, uh, Cardiff City do get a goal, unfortunately for them. They ship four to Liverpool. Uh, the uh, rumors of Mohamed Salah's demise uh, greatly exaggerated. Mo Salah gets another goal, and the Reds win 4-1 to one on the day. Uh, let's get Mo Salah. Hey, 14 matches this year in all competitions, seven goals, four assists. It's not a bad return for a guy who, quote, isn't playing well and has no form at the moment. So it's going to be terrifying when he does get form. Uh, a brace for Sadio Mane and Zerdin Shakiri getting his first competitive goal for Liverpool. And, man, it was a beauty. I'm going to tell you, Zerdin Shakiri, hot damn, that's been a hell of a signing for Liverpool this year. He has uh, provided massive offensive spark off the bench. Also, suddenly what you're seeing, this is a little different from what we've seen a lot in the last few years. Liverpool, known for that 4-3-3 under Jurgen Klopp, are suddenly kind of making their way back to the 4-2-3-1 formation that Klopp was dominant with in his time at Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Fabinho making his first two starts for the Reds, Champions League last week, and then against Cardiff City, was fantastic in both of them. Zerdin Shakiri is able to play a multitude of positions in either formation. And, man, suddenly Liverpool is starting to click. Eight goals in their last two matches. Is this the time where Liverpool kind of hit that groove and start putting goals by people? Because if that's the deal, that defense is really good. They're really good. But we know what that front line is capable of. Liverpool could start putting up some big numbers. And they're going to have a big test this week as they travel to London. And they're going to be taking on the uh, Woolwich Arsenal. Uh, fine, we'll drop the Woolwich. Whatever, I'm old school. You guys know who I am. But Liverpool taking on an Arsenal team this week who have massively exceeded expectations. Their 11-match win streak was broken this past week in a 2-2 draw with Crystal Palace, but still have a nice unbeaten streak going. And Arsenal, if they have eyes for a top four finish and challenging at the top of the table. They're going to need to get results in matches like this. For Liverpool, if they want to win the title, they need to walk into Arsenal and come out with three points. That's an important three points for Liverpool. Uh, Arsenal currently sitting fourth in the table. I believe they're fourth. Yeah, they are fourth um, after City beat Tottenham. So, Liverpool, this would, um, at this point of the season, that means they would have played the other three teams in the top four with them. Uh, draws against City and Chelsea. Yeah, they need to go to the Emirates and get three points from Arsenal. Uh, good news, Mo Salah, there was a little injury scare this week. He was spotted with a splint on his wrist. Um, they've said absolutely no issue there. He will play this week. So we will see what Liverpool take down to London and the throw up against Arsenal, but a big weekend for the Reds after that. Uh, let me think off the top of my head. I know this month they play, I believe it'll be Fulham on the 11th, and then, yippee, we go to an international break. Excuse me, before Fulham, between Arsenal and Fulham will be the return trip to uh, Red Star Belgrade, so they'll get a trip to Serbia. Then, uh, as we said, Fulham did a good old international break, and then Liverpool come back and end the month with Watford. And you know, it seems like there's one more there, but I know they also play PSG at the end of the month in Champions League. So a big month of November. Um, you know, Liverpool have a chance to pick up some points, chance to keep playing well, and it all starts this Saturday at the Emirates. Um, that, that's pretty much all I've got on Liverpool at the moment, but just taking a look around the landscape, I don't know exactly what it's hit so far. 
all eyes are on the coaching job at Real Madrid. You know, Julian, Julian Lopetegui, you know, he, he did not last long. He had a, he, he might have finished his cup of coffee at Real Madrid before getting the axe. But I'll tell you, it, it takes a lot of talent to get axe for both the Spain and Real Madrid job in about a four-month period. Whew, somebody made a couple of bad life choices there. And Lopetegui, we're looking at you, pal. Um... Solari has been named the interim manager. Uh, there's some rule in Spain. I didn't pick up all of it, but something like you can only have an interim tag on a manager for 14 days. I uh, don't believe Solari is the long-term solution. He may literally just be the two-week solution here. So then the names start coming up. Who would it be? Apparently, it's been said that if Jose Mourinho was available, that's exactly who Florentino Perez would want to bring in. Um, Antonio Conte, who you know, we talked about a week ago, that or no, we didn't get to talk about it, but we talked we talked about him being a potential name in it, <laughs> and then he was the odds-on favorite, and then suddenly he wasn't getting the job. His name is still out there, if they can work something out after this two weeks. But the name that I know is going to make it cringe is Mauricio Pochettino. That seems to be the long-term goal for Real Madrid is to bring in Pochettino. Crazy shit happens now, folks. I'm, I'm not ruling anything out at this point. It would be devastating for Tottenham to lose him this early in the season, or just at any point of the season, it'd be devastating to lose Pochettino. Yeah, I don't think Pochettino's going to leave, but like I said, man, the way shit's going now, who the hell knows? And right now with Spurs... Spurs are off to their best ever Premier League start, and they're outside the top four. You know, it's tough right now. Another setback on the stadium issue. Uh, Pochettino, it was known that he wanted the Real Madrid job. Daniel Levy put the axe to that, promised him funds for players. He didn't get any players. You know, I think Pochettino has said mostly all the right things for Tottenham. But at the same time, you can tell there's a little underlying tension there. It just seems like Mauricio Pochettino is destined to be the manager of Real Madrid. I don't know if it's going to happen in November, December, or if it's going to happen in June of next year. It just seems like that's a match that's going to be made sooner or later. Uh, and where does it leave Tottenham? A very, very competitive Premier League right now. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not trying to go to Ed Green by any means. It's not what I do. Uh, but Pochettino is the big name out there, and that is the name that it seems Real Madrid want to add to their son. So just something to keep an eye on. Um, other than that, guys, that's about all I got for you today. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a drive home for me in the morning. <clears throat> I'm not 100% clear on everything. So I'm not going to do a so raw this week. I couldn't do it justice if I did. Um, but I will throw out the one thing is that the uh, crown jewel in Saudi Arabia it is going down. John Cena not going to make it to the event for whatever reason. But, folks, hey, if you can't have John Cena, you have the next best thing. Hulkamania is going to run wild, brother, on the desert in Saudi Arabia, brother. Uh, Hulk Hogan is on the uh, is on the list. Is being advertised for Crown Jewel. It would be the return of the Hulkster after quite a little wandering in the wilderness here for Hulk after his ill-fated interview that he gave. God, it's, it's been about four years now <laughs> uh, since we've seen Hulk Hogan. So don't know where that's going to lead, what it's going to lead to down the line, but. Right now, WWE, that we talked about, they're on kind of a nostalgia kick. Man, what's more nostalgic than Hulk Hogan? So, uh, I'll be happy to see the Hulks are back. I've always been a fan. Anyway, folks, that's going to kick it into an end mode for me today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this week uh, on the Foreign Affair podcast. Ed Green's going to take it home for you. And I'll be back with you guys next week where we will uh, we'll be reviewing Liverpool Arsenal. 
and we'll be touching on Champions League football. Big week coming up, as it always is in the world of football. I'm Wes Bradshaw. I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks so much, Wes. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, so that is going to do it, though, for episode 234 of the A Foreign Affair podcast. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, NGSC Sports and NGSCSports.com. We never stop, even if this podcast is about to, as well as Alicia's Pillows and Things. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, just search for Alicia's Pillows and Things, and you can find all the awesome deals on sports-themed furniture-based apparel yeah, we'll call that there. Um, you can also find NGSC Sports on Twitter as a collective. You can also find us on Twitter at AFA Pod. Uh, Wes is at Wes Bradshaw twenty one, and I am at Edward Green. You can also find us on Instagram and YouTube via our parent show, the All New Sports Show. You can also email us at that address, All New Sports Show at gmail dot com. Um, last, I uh, want to thank our podcast providers, including Podbean.com, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, the TuneIn Radio app, Google Play Music, and the iTunes Music Store. Uh, we'll be back next week with a, I believe, a live episode, um, where we will discuss uh, this coming up week in the Premier League. We will discuss Champions League football is this week as well. Uh, big week as we start the, the second half of the round robin. The double round robin that is the group stage of the Champions League that starts uh, next week on Tuesday. So, big week of football coming up here. Uh, so, for my call and crime, Wes Bradshaw, I am Edward Green. Uh, and as always, stay safe, enjoy the football, and good night, Leicester City. Again, our hearts are with you guys. Sponsored by Alicia's Pillows and Things. Check out the Facebook page, Alicia's Pillows and Things, where you will find home decor you will not be able to resist at prices anybody can afford. Check out the pillows and stools of your favorite sports teams. Maybe you want a set of your kid's favorite cartoon or movie character. You can also get full body and neck pillows as well. Log on to NGSCSports.com and go to the Alicia's Pillows and Things tab on the homepage to complete your order. It makes a great gift for Christmas at an affordable price. NGSC Sports. We never stop. You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com where you can get awesome analysis for all things sport. Or check out our podcasts on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, iTunes, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, head to NGSC Sports' YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. Never stop.